Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a classic hard problem, called Maximal Rectangle. This one can be pretty intimidating, because it combines a few different concepts, but don't worry. We're gonna break it down step by step, and see how we can solve it efficiently. Here's the problem. We are given a grid, or a matrix, filled with zeros and ones. Our task is to find the largest possible rectangle that is made up entirely of ones, and then return its area. It's like looking for the biggest solid block of land in a map of islands. Let's clarify exactly what we're looking for. We get a 2D list containing the characters 0 and 1. We need to output a single number, the area. Remember, area is just width times height. The catch is that the rectangle we choose cannot contain any zeros. It has to be a solid block of ones. Let's look at this example. If you scan through this grid, you might see small rectangles of ones here and there. But if you look at the second and third rows, towards the right side there's a nice cluster. We can form a rectangle that is 2 units high and 3 units wide. That gives us an area of 6. Our algorithm needs to be able to spot this, even if the rectangle is tall and skinny or short and wide. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python logic, but the concepts apply everywhere. If you're a Java, C++, or JavaScript developer, don't worry. I've included the full code for those languages at the very end of the video, so stick around. So how do we solve this without checking every single possible rectangle, which would be incredibly slow? The trick is to simplify the problem. Imagine we process the matrix one row at a time. For each row, we can think of it as the base of a histogram. We look upwards from that row and count how many continuous ones are stacked on top of it. This turns our 2D problem into a series of 1D problems. Let's visualize this. In the first row, if there's a 1, the height is 1. Simple. Now move to the second row. If there's a 1 directly below a 1 from the first row, the bar grows. The height becomes 2. If there's a 0, the bar breaks, and the height resets to 0. By doing this row by row, we build a set of heights. For each row, we just calculate the largest rectangle in that specific histogram, which is a problem we know how to solve efficiently. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leak code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent, which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel, you're trying to improve so this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use. Core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now. While it's early, check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Here is the complete Python solution. It might look a bit dense, but it's really doing two things repeatedly, updating the heights for the current row, and then running the histogram algorithm on those heights. We'll break these parts down now, First, we need to maintain our skyline. We initialize a list of heights with zeros. Then, as we loop through every row in the matrix, we check each cell. If we see a 1, we increment the height at that column index. It's like adding a block to the stack. But if we see a 0, that continuous vertical line of 1s is broken, so we must reset the height at that column to 0 immediately. This prepares our data for the next step. This is the magic part, which is exactly the same as the largest rectangle in histogram problem. We use a stack to keep track of column indices where the heights are increasing. When we encounter a column that is shorter than the one stored at the top of our stack, it means the rectangle defined by that taller column can't extend any further to the right. So we pop it off, calculate its height and width, and check if it's the biggest area we've seen so far. We keep doing this for every row. It's always good to think about what could break our code. What if the matrix is completely empty? We handle that right at the start by returning zero. What if it's just one row or one column? our loops will still run correctly. Even if the matrix is all zeros or all ones, the logic holds up because the math for the histogram area doesn't change. 
the approach is quite robust. So, is this efficient? Yes, it's actually linear relative to the number of cells in the grid. If we have R rows and C columns, the time complexity is big O of R times C. This is because for every row, we do a linear scan to update heights, and the stack operation is also linear. For space, we only need to store the heights array and the stack, so the space complexity is big O of C, which is very memory efficient. Alright, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down in detail, but they follow the exact same logic. Update heights, then use a stack. Just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. It uses the same integer array for heights and a stack class for the indices. You can pause here to study it. Next up here is the C++ version. We use a vector for the heights and the standard library stack. It's very similar to the Java version, just with C++ syntax. Feel free to pause. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. We use a simple array as a stack here, using push and pop methods. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. The biggest takeaway here is the power of reducing a problem. By treating each row as a histogram, we converted a complex 2D search into a series of efficient 1D calculations. This is a common pattern in grid problems, so keep it in your toolkit. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click. Maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.